What is up my fasting family? My name is Justin and this is Fasting Philosophy and in today's video I'm going to be talking about four different types of fasting that you can do. A fat fast, a broth fast, water fasting which also includes salt water fasting and dry fasting. We're going to be talking about the benefits, the drawbacks of each and we are going to find out which one is going to be the best for you in achieving your goals. So without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is a video that I wish I would have had whenever I first started fasting because I had no idea that there was four different types of fasting. There was one golden rule that I heard repeated multiple times when I first started fasting and that was do not consume anything over 30 calories. I heard this all over the place. Everyone was saying whatever you do don't consume anything over 30 calories or you'll break your fast. You can have sugar-free beverages, you can have coffee, whatever. Just don't consume over 30 calories. Now what I also heard was that people were drinking bulletproof coffee and they were considering that as a fast and I said well if the rule is you can't consume anything over 30 calories, then bulletproof coffee breaks your fast. And bulletproof coffee, for those of you who do not know, is coconut oil, MCT oil, and grass-fed butter. Now, fat stimulates insulin the least. So, if you are consuming bulletproof coffee, this is going to fall under the first type of fasting, which is considered a fat fast. The benefit of fat fasting is you are increasing insulin the least amount, but you are still getting in calories. This is beneficial for people who are trying to get into ketosis, but it's not as effective as completely abstaining from calories altogether as your body still has to burn through all the fat calories in order to get to the body fat. It can blunt the hunger for sure, so you can go longer periods of time without eating. So I would say if you are new to fasting and you don't necessarily want to do prolonged fasting with absolutely nothing in your stomach. A fat fast is a great way to go. Uh, it will get you into ketosis as you are, are only consuming fats for fuel. However, you will have to burn all the calories you do consume from the fat first before you will target your body fat. So with that being said, fat fasting is beneficial for those who are just starting out with fasting and are afraid to go extended periods of time without food. And if you see someone doing a bulletproof coffee, they are partaking in fat fasting. I used to always want to argue and get like defensive like if you're drinking bulletproof coffee you're not fasting. You know there's no rules in the fasting game so that's why I'm making this video to help you guys understand. It is a fat fast if you are consuming calories from fat. However calories from fat are you know you know if you consume like half a stick of butter that's like I don't even know a couple hundred calories so it could take you a long time to target your body fat. So like I said Fat fasting is good for people who are just starting out with fasting or people who, you know, still want to be able to consume some kind of calories, get in some kind of energy, but still maintain not eating food. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the second type of fast, and this is going to be a bone broth fast. Now, there are many benefits to bone broth fasting, but the number one benefit that I could see initially is that bone broth offers a lot of electrolytes and this is beneficial because when you are fasting and you are drinking water and you are urinating you're going to urinate all out all of your electrolytes this is going to cause electrolyte imbalance this is going to cause you to feel lightheaded this is going to cause you to feel you know a little lethargic you might get some brain fog and things of that nature you're not going to feel very good so bone broth will help you to prolong a fast however bone broth does have calories in it um I'll go ahead and show you guys. This is the bone broth that I use, uh, and I only use bone broth to break my fasts. This is Kettle and Fire uh, bone broth right here, and I did some research, and this was the closest I could find to like a really organic. They just they use the best ingredients, things of that nature. So if you want a bone broth to break your fast, I highly recommend Kettle and Fire. Uh, but bone broth fasting is beneficial because you are getting in those electrolytes. However. Um, in a one box of this bone broth, you would be consuming 100 calories. Now, that's still going to spike insulin. You're still going to have an insulin response when you do consume bone broth. So you can do a bone broth fast, and it will be very beneficial. You will be getting in the electrolytes, but you will still be stimulating insulin, so it will not be as beneficial as doing a plain water fast. Now, the other benefits of bone broth fasting are going to be it's going to help your uh, gut biome. It's going to help with the with the gut bacteria and you can do more research on that and if you're trying to rebuild your gut biome uh and and get more healthy gut bacteria bone broth fasting is definitely a good way to go with that but if you're trying to fast for fat loss then salt water fasting is going to give you that same effect you're still going to get the electrolytes you will not get the insulin response that you will from bone broth so with that being said let's go ahead and get into the third type of fasting which is going to be water fasting now there's two different types of water fasting you can do plain water fasting or you can do salt water fasting now 
I recommend if you're going to be fasting longer than 48 hours that you do a salt water fast because as I said before, your electrolytes will be depleted when you go to the bathroom and this is going to cause you to have fatigue. It's going to cause you to have you know mood swings, all kind of bad stuff that you do not want. So if you're doing a fast longer than 48 hours, I highly recommend that you use salts in your water and this is potassium and sodium and also you can use some baking soda. I will make sure I put up a picture of the recipe. It's also known as the snake diet, snake juice recipe. This is the the recipe that I use. It's what I used on my four-day extended water fast. You guys can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, so I would highly recommend if you're going longer than 48 hours that you do a salt water fast, not a plain water fast. Now, anything under 48 hours you're not going to lose enough electrolytes to really notice that much of a difference. So in that case, plain water fasting is just as just as good. So with that being said, water fasting, in particular salt water fasting, is a wonderful way that you can lose weight, that you can keep your electrolytes up, and it's just going to help you to feel better for longer while you're fasting. Now the last type of fasting that I want to talk to you guys about is going to be dry fasting. Dry fasting is something that I have not delved into. It's extremely hardcore. I've heard that one day of dry fasting is equivalent to three days of of water fasting. So with that being said, dry fasting is extremely effective. However, it is also extremely draining on your body. Dry fasting is extremely effective for healing as your body will go into autophagy much quicker and your body will be burning fat also much quicker as well. However, you cannot be as physically active when you are dry fasting. Now, Shameen, Shameen Miller I'll put up a screenshot of her video. She did a, I think it was, I forgot how long it was. It was like four day, five, six, seven days of extended dry fasting. And man, she got my respect for sure because I cannot even imagine how hard that would be. So uh, I had a question on my last video asking about dry fasting. I'll make a separate video on that. I personally do not dry fast. I'm too active to dry fast. However, when I do get into a situation where I get sick or you know, I need to heal something, I will partake in some dry fasting and I will document it for you guys and let you guys know how effective it was. But with that being said, in my opinion, saltwater fasting is the most effective way to lose fat and keep energy levels up, including like your mood and keep everything stabilized for the longest period of time. So if you're looking to do extended fasting for weight loss, definitely do uh, saltwater fasting. If you're looking to heal your body, definitely do dry fasting for an extended period of time but you're not going to be as active because you will have the potential to pass out and things of that nature um if you're looking to get into ketosis as fast as possible obviously salt water fasting is going to be the quickest way or dry fasting but you can use fat fasting if you still want to consume calories and bone broth fasting is beneficial for helping with your gut biome and yeah If you guys want to add anything, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, I wish that someone would have made this kind of video for me when I was first starting out because I kind of had to figure it out. I watched like tons and tons of videos and I was like, what are the rules? You know, I just wanted somebody to break it down for me into simplistic terms that I could understand. So as far as I understand, there's four different types of fasting and that is the benefits to each. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, hit the comment section and let me know. Um, also, you can share it on Facebook, share it with your friends, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, I do want to read off one comment that I had on a past video right quick before I let you guys go. The comment is from Jamie Clary. He says, I follow about eight different fasting channels, and I have to admit, this is one of my favorite channels. I did lose 33 pounds in 30 days on OMAD, which is one meal a day, with a one-hour eating window. Mr. Jamie, I want to thank you so much for the comment saying that this is one of your favorite fasting channels. That really means a lot to me. Congratulations on losing 33 pounds in 30 days. Um, He also says, okay, so he was doing OMAD. One hour eating window. He did a couple of 48 hour fasts and 152. Um, He says, thanks for the motivation. I've directed numerous people to your channel that constantly ask, how are you losing weight so rapidly? Which I want to thank you for. Thank you guys so much for all of the you know, referrals. Uh, I look at my YouTube analytics and a lot of my views are coming from Facebook as well. So I have people sharing my videos on Facebook, which is is awesome. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, but he also says, by the way, my caloric intake was always 1,200 to 1,500 calories per day, even after the 48s. So Jamie followed one meal a day. Um, his calories were 1,200 to 1,500. He threw in some 48-hour fasts. His longest was 52. 
um, and he lost 33 pounds in 30 days. So, Mr. Jamie, thank you so much for that testimonial. Um, I sent him a reply thank him, thanking him for his comment, and he said uh, it was his very first YouTube reply by anyone that has a channel. It said it was a motivation booster, and he was going to try for a 72-hour fast. Okay, I just want to let you guys know that you guys are not a following. This is a journey that we are all on together. So I, w I want to reply to every single comment that everyone sends me. I want you guys to know that I do not take any of you for granted. Uh, like I said, this is a community. This is a place where we can come together, where like-minded people can come together. So if I reply to your comment, don't be surprised because um, this is a community. Like I said, it's not a following. So with that being said, thank you guys so, so, so much for the continued support. This is just incredible to me. Um, so yeah, hit the like button if you like, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Till then, stay fasted, my friends. Peace.